civilization. That's my term when I hear you play golf. When I oh. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Now we're going to get back in this. <laughs> Absolution is, is when the sin is forgiven. And, and here's, the, here's the part. With the church, we, when we commit to the sacrament of reconciliation, you'll have an opportunity to do this. To prepare for the sacrament is, is an examination of conscience. What, you know, I go into my life, and we should do this every day, really. Uh, into my life and how did my life today relate to the gospel and relate to being a Christian and how did I relate to the people around me and how did I do with use the talents that God has given me and, and when I do that I identify the things that, that I fail and so um, when, I, when I go to the sacrament of reconciliation my preparation is the scripture and um, the examination of conscience so that I can acknowledge my sin and, and uh, be sorry for it. Then, I, then when, when I confess the sin, I go to the priest. Uh, there, there are several ways uh, to, to go to the sacrament of reconciliation. The practical part that I want you to be aware of, you can go down into, in, in the basilica uh, because it, it is uh, an historical building. The reconciliation room is a box kind of thing. It's built up to the side of the church and, and you go in, the priest is in the middle and it can be a penitent on either side. And the priest can't see the penitent. I can't see who's there. Uh, and there's a, there's a screen that, that uh, kind of that divides us. I can hear you, but I can't see you. you I, I think you can see me because the light, the, the light is on. There's not a light on. You can remain anonymous and go to confession that way. Another way, a very healthy way too, is to sit down face to face with the priest and pray. And, and, and it's good, sometimes you might find it good to find, uh, if you can find a good confessor that you can go to and feel good, that good this is the priest that you can see regularly, that, that, that's helpful too. Uh, and, uh, th those are the basic two ways to go, to go to confession. Sometimes during, during the holy seasons of the year, like Advent, and Lent, the parish offers, and we will do this with the, the surrounding parishes, uh, a penance service where we come together. And part of the pre reason for that is we can hear God's word together, and also we can understand that we're all in need of this. And it's something that we're all in need of, and it, it's a public proclamation that we realize that our sin does affect the whole church. Uh, one of the, 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 the challenges, you know, if my own sin affects my family, and that, you know, that my blood family, but then it affects the family who I serve, and because I'm not, my forgiveness goes that way too. If, if I can be experience God's forgiveness, I can come out and, and share that with the whole family also. Uh, the, the prayer of absolution is, is, is really beautiful. Um, there, there is also, we can get back to copies of prayers like the first reconciliation about the fact of contrition. Is that in the packets? Um, I think so. There's a whole thing on examination of conscience. Well, so we have that later. I'll make sure that they have copies of that. Okay. When, the, when you finish your confession, when I finish my confession, I say, Father, I'm sorry for these sins. And I ask of you penance and absolution. Those are the two things the priest is going to give you. Penance and absolution. Penance is what are you going to do to pray for that broken window? Penance might be, what are you going to do to help restore a, a relationship that has been shattered because of gossip? Um, that, that's another old story that uh, I'll tell you briefly, but the, the, uh, uh, a person goes to confession time and time again and says, I, I gossip about my friends, and uh, I gossip, my gossip has ruined, ruined that, that person's reputation. And, 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 my, and it wasn't true. You know, how can I ever be forgiven for having done something like that? You know what? God's grace can forgive that. God's grace can forgive by even the worst possible, whatever the, the, the most difficult thing you can think of. And, uh, probably, it's hard, you know, not, not, not to name names, or not to name specific sin, but. The, the, one of the heartbreaking sins that, that uh, 
happens is the sin of abortion. And, and that's why sometimes I have a really hard time preaching about uh, abortion from the pulpit. Because having been a confessor, everybody knows abortion. I mean, we know where the church stands on abortion. It, it, we know that, 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 that life is sacred. And the church says that, that abortion is a human life uh, from the moment of conception until it, it is wrong. But to, to, to draw that home from the pulpit, I've had a real hard time doing that because having been a confessor, when uh, an abortion happens, not just the baby dies, something else dies in the person. And, 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 and they kind of think that they can never be forgiven again. But God can't do that. That's how great God's forgiveness is. Uh, the, the person who participated in it, the person who paid for it, the person who agreed with it, all these people are terribly, terribly hurt. And God's forgiveness can, can bring that home and bring that healing. And, 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 and all, that, all that happens within this sacrament. I'm so humbled when I see that happen. That I got to realize that God's grace is so powerful that we're like it's been destroyed for any number of really confusing reasons. Life is restored to Christ. And Christ heals that person and brings them back. And he said, you know what? You can go back again. You are a child of God. And God is coming down to pick you up like that little lamb and put you on his shoulders and say, let me pick you and put you back in my flock again. That's what this sacrament does. This is a great sacrament. This is a treasure that God has given to our church. And, and I, I encourage you to take advantage of it and not to be afraid of it. Take advantage of it and live it and have to keep going to confession for the next 25 years with the same sin every week. God's going to continue to the next 25 years to say, I love you. You're my child. Let me take you home. And God's going to make it. Make it good. And I'm going to bring you back. Amen. <laughs> uh, there, there's, there's another lesson that we're going to do on reconciliation where we'll actually do some practice and understanding of how to receive the sacrament. But I just wanted to give you a taste tonight about the parts of it, contrition, confession, penance, and absolution. To recognize the evil that sin can be, and only God can forgive sin. But obviously, if we see it through the scripture itself, God has given the church the authority to forgive sins in his name. And the priest, by the way, is never the judge of you. God is the judge. The priest is there to act for God and for the church to let you know that you can.